Thanks for listening to Walleye Talk with Will and Dan. This week's episode is brought to you by Porter Dock Docks and Lifts, Full Stringer Bait and Tackle, The One Stop in Longville, Muskie House Marine, and Woman Lake Lodge. And new episode starts. Hey everybody, <laughs> uh, this is Walleye Talk, I'm Dan. I'm Will. And we are in season three. Oh, and there's Graham. And baby Graham and Bree. And Mama Bree. Hi guys. Look at how cute that guy is. He's, he's just a chunky suit. monkey. Yep. I think he's going to jig like Will Newer because his arm is just always going like this. Just like Uncle Will taught him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Look at him go. He's just practicing. The other day I caught him. He was going like this, and then he went, ooh, ooh. ooh. <laughs> ooh. He doesn't know what to do next, but he knows, it, he knows something's coming. It's just a natural reaction. Yeah. It's yeah. just a natural reaction. Just good fish stinks. Ooh, that's a good word. Um, well, Dan, before we get started, I got a, I got a question to ask you. Okay. Do you know the difference between Dubai and Abu Dhabi? <laughs> no. Well, in Dubai, the people do not like the Flintstones, but the people in Abu Dhabi do. <laughs> gets me every time gets me every time oh my gosh pretty <laughs> great <laughs> my sister told me that I freaked out man I just freaked out <laughs> uh, <stop. laughs> oh it's my favorite joke I must have told it a hundred times yesterday if you saw me in the store yesterday you were you were hearing the joke <laughs> you heard the joke everybody uh, good stuff thank you for that <laughs> Good yeah. way to start start us out, man. Oh, only took me two tries. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, where, where are you right now? I'm in my backyard. I had a turkey goblin back here this morning. I nice. was pretty excited. It almost made me late for work. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, important when important things arise, you, people just have to understand. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I had to play with this turkey a little bit. Right. He was hot. Oh my gosh, he was hot. How what, like where was how close was he? Do you think? Oh, uh, I bet he's a hundred yards away. Nice. Oh yeah, he was, and he was just. I stepped out the door and, whoo, 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 honey, wake up! <laughs> wake up! <laughs> uh, you, you know, but you got to take these little things to just take your mind off the walleyes, okay? Just Otherwise, not, you'll get just... trapped in this vicious circle. That, you know, it's just a slippery slope. Yeah. <sighs> so we're recording. It's the it's the Sunday from before opener. So we have six more sleeps before opener. That's a lot of sleepless nights, Dan. <laughs> just a strung out Will Newer at the one stop. <sighs> just um, want to catch walleyes. It's coming, man. We had and it we had just a beautiful week. I mean, today is also a, another beautiful day. It's cooled off a little bit, but we had a beautiful week this week. And uh, yeah, I it got I think it got a lot of people fired up about what's coming. Oh yeah, it's hard. How do you not? Yeah. So this is um, the opener episode, right? We'll talk all all things opener. I'd say, right? We don't have anything else really on the agenda. Just catching walleyes. Right in the first week of the uh, open water season. But before we start the episode, let's get a, let's, let's hear from Portadoc. All right. Clap. We're not doing the fetch thing, dude. We're not doing the fetch thing right now. (laughs) Take a break. So since we're doing the video podcast, we don't have an opportunity to use Portadoc's terrific jingle. Um, What we can do is tell you how terrific Portadoc is. Dan, how terrific is Portadoc? They make great products and uh, something else to keep in mind is that they're a Minnesota company. I think more important these days than any is supporting our our small local businesses. Portadoc is one example. Warrior Boats made in Minnesota as well and Muskie House Marine is right in our backyard. Uh, Muskie House deals with Warrior and Portadoc so way to stick with your comrades here in Minnesota is to support them by supporting their products where can you find more information on portadox oh you can always go to 
porta-doc.com <laughs> <laughs> to look up any of their products. Also, you could call the Muskie House and they could run you down uh, their entire inventory. Terrific graphics. Thank you. Yep. I was, I was going to be an artist if this fishing thing didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> so what uh what's the water like out there dan what what are we looking at for temps what i mean is it all gone the water the water is gone yep we just have a bunch, of, bunch of dry holes up here so the fish are gonna you're gonna be able to get your limit they might be a little rotten uh but <laughs> walk down into the hole and and pick out your six or four and it's all good <laughs> No, we got uh, this week, as I mentioned, the weather was pretty beautiful and water temps uh, moved quite a bit. I was on Woman two days ago and was seeing water temps at like 52 or 53 degrees in the evening. Wow. I, I do think it's important to keep in mind that like the warmest part of the day is is later than it usually, later than it is uh in the in our winter months you know i it kind of surprises me every day it's like that four or five o'clock that's really when we're getting the most heat it seems these days so right i think that's not one or two not noon one o'clock no no it, it takes a while to build this time and i or this time of year and largely because we we do have some cool nights and then yesterday we had a real real warm day so i i, I would have guessed woman probably would have been at like 55 degrees yesterday and uh it's gonna drop i think that's probably the warmest it's gonna be until the week after opener would be my guess most of our right. houses this week are um in the low low 50s a couple in the 40s and then some got cold, freezing at night too yeah, cold nights um so i think it won't get any warmer if it can hold on to that i'd, I'd be happy but i think we're probably going to be dealing with lakes the size of woman being maybe maybe getting a little above 50 in the afternoons but maybe not maybe right at 50 or below and then the bigger ones i think will for sure be 50 or below for opener boy but you know the, having those cooler temperatures you know might scare people off but you, you or make them think that it's going to be it, it might be pretty poor fishing but i mean those temperatures are right for catching walleyes yeah and i do think this week probably helped them a lot with getting done with the the spawn you know um, and and start the recuperation yeah, process yeah so i do think that hopefully we hit post spawn fish that are that are hungry maybe a little lethargic but they're that the water temp i used to think that was real real key and now i think it has more to do with the time period between when they are done spawning and when we get to fish you know right so i think uh i think it could be a good opener it's going to be chilly i'd be wearing warm gear for sure um, right, but I do think the fish are going to be ready to ready to chow. Um, do you think that uh, you're going to be fishing more sand or rock, or what do you think you're going to be doing on opening? Looking right now, I'm thinking mostly like I'm going to start on new growth vegetation, and um, and go from there. I imagine I'm going to find some fish in there, so that's the plan to start with um shallow sand is not part of the of the of the plan um i guess my number two or part of part of my first day will will be for sure checking out a little bit of deeper rock and by deeper rock i mean like 15 to 20 feet of water um, yep. those that's the agenda right now how about for you well i'm gonna check for sure check out the sand because well i guess that's where i want them to be doesn't mean that's where they're going to be, but uh, I'm going to check out the five, six foot sand, especially since, you know, they're going to be post-spawn and they're going to be hungry. And that's where those little perch are going to be. And that's what they're going to be feeding on in the area I'm going to be fishing in. Uh, those spot tails probably aren't going to be up there. So I, I'm thinking their main food source is going to be perch. So I'm going to be checking that. And worse you know, if the worst case scenario, I'm going to try the fish in the, the areas where I anchor in the evening and, and wait them out because they're bound to be there. Are you fishing the morning or the evening or all day? What's e your... I'm going to be fishing evening. Gotcha. So you're going to, you're going to get on Leech Lake and check shallow sand to start with. 
thinking that right. hoping that they're just feeding all day right now and if they're in that stuff they're gonna bite right away as soon as you get on the water and then that's that's the goal and then the the backup is just have a good good peak hour right get it all done in an hour and see what happens gotcha. um i i will be if the shallow sand doesn't work out and i have the time i will go into there's a couple of small areas that have a real nice um kind of soft bottom to a back water uh to a firm bottom transition and i fished that a number of times early in the season and they tend to like to be on that mud line but really close to the to the to the hard bottom yeah. and in this situation the the soft bottom's actually shallower than the firm bottom so um it, it, it's sometimes it's really good sometimes it's just nothing but slimers um but either way it's hook sets and i'm into that <laughs> yeah that sounds pretty good right now i had i had a pretty fun week fishing perch up here uh, i've always spent my my preseason time catching crappies and uh this year i well it, it actually my electronics is what drove me to the body of water to I was I wanted to get good with my imaging or get get familiar with my new graphs and that led me to a bigger body of water and then um led to a pretty good perch bite. Which you find them big yellow monsters? The jumbos, dude. We were catching jumbos and it was pretty fantastic. And I <laughs> like early spring crappie fishing will always have like a, a spot in my heart, but uh that there that's a much more satisfying uh afternoon or evening for me is catching perch oh yeah and you're fishing similar areas with the same technique that you want to fish walleyes for yeah right so right. it's like a, it's it's just like a minor you know watching a minor league game that's a great way that's a great analogy <laughs> exactly what it's like <laughs> and they eat pretty good too so we've, we've been eating perch a lot the last couple weeks Oh, you, I'm jealous. I'm yeah. jealous. They crisp up so well. Yeah. Um, so what are you kind of expecting for, you know, are, do you expect there to be, it'd be a pretty productive opener for you? I mean, clearly, you know, the optimist and everybody wants to say that, but what do you, what do you truly think? I do. I, I, I do feel pretty good about it. I also feel uh, that like we're, we're all sort of due for a little bit of good luck these days. And I feel like opener is maybe the chance for, for things to turn a little bit, you know, and regardless, I will tell you that the days in my boat have been the ones that are like the most worry free, the most worry free hours I've had in a long time, you know, um, where you, you're living in the moment. So regardless of how you're fishing, turns hey. out, I'd, I'd, I'd make sure you're paying attention to that, that you're, your mind is maybe a little clearer than it's been for the last eight weeks and and everybody deserves a little bit of that right now but i i honestly sure. think we'll have a good, we'll have a good opener um and yeah if if we don't we'll learn something from it and <laughs> just and, like we did last year yeah yeah <laughs> just the way it is yeah how about you how are you feeling about it You've never, well, you've never in your life felt like you were going to have a rough opener. I think I might strike out in my shallow sand endeavors, but it's worth swinging for the fences, right? Like that, if I'm going to catch a, just a pile of fish, it's going to be in the shallow sand right. and I'm going to be all by myself on a pot of fish that nobody else is going to think to even look at oh so I, I it, it's going to be i think it's going to be all or nothing i'm going to catch one or two and or i'm not i'm either going to catch a bunch or i'm going to catch like one or two and it's going to be pretty slow i'm going to have to work really hard to catch like one or two fish um but i think my plan b and my plan c are good enough to be like yeah we had a we had a really good opener sure yeah, yeah but I'm that's what it's all about Right. I am. I'm. Uh. I'm jealous that you get to start on leech because I. I think. I think you've got a good plan, and your your first spot is essentially 
we've talked about it in the past where like one bite could mean a lot for you, you know, everything. So like, especially, you know, you said you might catch a fish or two out of there and you're right. If you, if you were there for an extended period of time, you might, but if you get a bite in the first like 20 minutes, likely things are going to be. going to grind it the whole night. And likely if you, I mean, sometimes that first bite can burn you, but, uh, yeah, that's the type of spot where one bite it means means a lot. And generally, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen much – like in a spot like that, it's going to happen much earlier than your, than 20 minutes. It's going to happen in – you know, if I find this school of fish, it's going to happen instantaneously. And what's more, than, more likely to happen, if I do have a good night there, I'm going to find a pot of fish. I'm going to catch them really good for a half an hour, and then it's going to fizzle out because the school's either A, moved, or B has really sore face. <laughs> uh, I like. I always like to think, oh yes, I gave them all sore faces. But let's be honest here. <laughs> <laughs> right. Probably just me. Right. It'd be interesting to know that you know, like on a on a really really good uh, bite. You know, when there's a there's obviously a, a concentration of fish on Leech Lake where the schools can be really really big. Huge. Um, but they can also be really, really hungry, you know. Is there, is there instances of there being schools of, like, 30 fish and you catch 25 of them? <laughs> <laughs> no. Or if you, catch, to be. if you catch 25 of them, does that mean there was 300 fish in that school, you know? Makes you feel a little – it makes me feel a little small to think, like, hey, you know, out of 300, you could only catch, like, 4% of them. <laughs> <laughs> or 10 percent of them you know right <laughs> um so i i would like to think that you're catching a high percentage of a smaller school but who knows really um maybe side image will tell you but right um i i guess i don't have the right answer yeah i know i yeah i didn't expect you to i just it was one of those you will never you think i'm just that. a super smart guy no. Think I just know it. I just I know it. I do not think. think you're a super smart guy. Don't worry about you that. You think I just? I, I'm. Oh, really, Dan? You think I'm just so handsome? I can't be smart. <laughs> Is that what you think? <laughs> that you're you are so shallow. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you with my my backhanded compliments. Yeah, you sure did give me the backhand. You filthy animal. <laughs> 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 Will you read something off that sheet of paper in front of you so we can talk fishing more? Uh, shiners. It's a minnow. Um, very, very highly sought after in the lakes region of Minnesota. But sometimes they're just a bugger to get. Yeah. Yeah. You're, um, the, you're the expert on this one, I would say. So you I'm not an expert. I just sell the stupid things. Right. Um, but, you know, I was very confident last week that we were absolutely going to have shiners. But the killer that's coming up this week is the wind. And the wind is what really drives the shiners uh, from being caught and getting, being able to be sold at a store. Um, even if they do get trapped and they get just, you know, and, and they, the wind is wrong, it's heavy enough and it's wrong, those shiners won't see a bait store, even if they've been trapped because they get beat up in the traps and they, they just don't survive. It's just a part of it. Um, but we're still hopeful. The water temps are warming up enough. The winds, I think, are coming from the correct direction where I think we could see some shiners from Mille Lacs and there's potential of finding some shiners on red because we've got Northwest winds coming towards Monday to or Tuesday, Wednesday. And if it's sunny out and we have those Northwest winds, those North sides of uh, the North side of, of red could be really terrific. You know, it could be protected enough where these minnows could see a lot of bait shops. Sure. But I think the takeaway is like, if you're, if you're an angler who's, super keyed into things maybe make a plan to feel confident in something besides having 10 dozen spot tails in your in your bait well right right 
which is and, fine. Like we've talked about that a lot. You know, those those are unique opportunities where, and maybe something that we're going to have to get more used to in the future anyway. So, um, figuring out a way to catch them without spot tails, especially for opening weekend, is going to be a, a you know something people are going to just have to have to do. And if you're if you're saying that you your opener is going to be ruined because you don't have a spot tail shiner in your boat. Uh, I don't think that could be further from the truth, especially when the water temps aren't even in the mid to upper fifties consistently. Um, like when the water is cold like this, those wise, their metabolism isn't at peak performance, especially if you're looking at high forties and early fifties uh, when it's at its warmest you know, it takes them a long time to digest. And what you'll find is that these walleyes, instead of having a nice big meal like this once a day, or, you know, a couple times a day, they're going to eat, eat sporadically at lots of little meals, right? What's available. So those young of the year perch are only going to be an inch and a half long, two inches long. And there's plenty of ways to catch fish that are eating perch beside a, besides a spot tail shiner. Right. And we've hit on the plastic like a lot, fit. but um, I, I feel like you just got to think about the, the variables you have control over, you know? So even if you're stuck with only fat heads, which Will Neuer does just fine with his fat heads, but then you got to th start thinking about the other variables that you have control over. So maybe you, maybe you rip through a bunch of different jig colors, maybe you um, long line them, maybe you, you know, change what you can and, and don't worry about, not having spot tails because right. you don't have any control over that at that point. And the one thing we do have going for us is there is a ridiculous amount of rainbows around right now. And they're not like those little dace with the skinny mouths on them. Right. These things are what fishermen dream of in October. Sure. And there's a pile of them floating around right now. Gotcha. That's good. Like, and Plenty I, for everybody to have good rainbows. Sure. And then if, if that were to be the case, like the immediate thing that jumped into my head is being aware of which size rainbow is catching fish, you know? It's likely yep. not the, the species of minnow that, that is catching fish for you. They're, they're probably going to be particular about a specific size on your specific lake, in your specific situation. So be right. aware, you know, like, all right, they, they ate a medium-sized uh, rainbow that time. Maybe Maybe that's it. And then that also means you got to buy more minnows because, well, you're pretty good at doing that sort of mental math in your head where you, mm -hmm. especially when you buy fat heads, you know, you buy a scoop of fat heads and out of that scoop, maybe like 15 are the ones you think you want. So you buy, you end up buying three scoops of fat heads to get the 45 minnows that you think are going to catch fish consistently. Right. And, you know, when push comes to shove, if you're if you're getting fish if you're gonna go through 45 minnows in a day uh they're probably gonna eat the little ones too <laughs> <laughs> a good point it's a good point uh, we don't want to yeah. doomsday it too much either you know we're we're six days away from opener a lot can change and i think the best way people would the the most efficient way to find out is to follow uh, the Facebook pages of your particular bait shop. They are going to let you know if they've got spot tails. I don't think they're going to just sit on them. They're going to want to advertise that they've got them. Right. And then make a game plan right. to, to get them to, you know, this year is going to be a little bit more complicated than usual. I, we always do the sort of treat people kindly message this episode, and that's going to be especially true this year, um, trying to be courteous to be patient be patient be courteous to the employees be patient with the with your fellow customers uh, and if you're gonna go fishing this weekend and you don't have your fishing license get it now online. don't wait till thursday or friday if you don't want to be around people if you don't want to be in these lines where you're going to be put in a bad situation get it now right and you can get it online. That's the, the easiest way to do it and the safest way, you know. On the line? On the line. Do you find it on the Google machine? or? Yeah, Google um, 
Minnesota fishing license and it'll be the first thing that pops up. Dan, then you know then. what we forgot to do? What? Oh, we forgot God. to. Oh my gosh! We talked about this all day. How this was like we four times. <laughs> <laughs> We're just two dummies up here thing. talking fishing. <laughs> we totally missed the whole thing. We, I wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, what did we forget to do? Uh, our we had a buddy or a guy, a listener, um, Eric Hammerding, uh, who super nice guy, super nice guy. He stopped by and, and picked up a Walleye Talk t-shirt. We have t-shirts for the business. If you want to support Walleye Talk and maybe spread the word about a okay fishing podcast that people haven't heard of, um, send us a message and we'll hook you up with the t-shirt. Dan, how much does one of them suckers cost? It costs 20 bucks unless I need to ship it to you and then it costs $25. But you always send it with a kiss that you've blown into it right <laughs> i was right. doing that until the current events well you do it over the mask <laughs> clearly and now i write personalized uh, love notes for each shirt i send out my personalized dude. like the port like the porta doc right sign yeah <laughs> so if you want a shirt um, and you're around longville you can try to reach out to one of us and we'll try to hook you up Otherwise, if you're not near Longville, I uh, try to ship them within a week. Um, so speaking of nice guys that you know came and talked to me, uh, I had this guy come in, super nice. I don't, I didn't catch his first name. His last name was Elliot, and he absolutely loved the podcast. And he said that uh, last fall. We gave him some tip about uh, using big minnows uh, on leech. And he said he caught 10 fish over 26 inches in the weekend he was up there. Nice. <laughs> That's what I said. That's great. Like, no, we did We're way too dumb to help people. <laughs> um, before, Super cool to hear that. Yeah. We like that stuff. Makes us feel good. I didn't catch 10 fish over 26 inches that day or that weekend. I'd take 10 fish over 26 inches any day. Yeah. Um, we, should, we should take a quick break and then uh, get back to it. So for this season of Walleye Talk, you're going to hear from a few new sponsors of the podcast. Uh, this week, I want to introduce Woman Lake Lodge. Woman Lake Lodge is a premier destination resort on Woman Lake, one of Will and I's favorites. They've got cozy, clean cabins right down by the water, a great lodge that sells some great lake apparel. They sell gas on the lake, and they even have their own homemade donuts. So Woman Lake Lodge, we're happy to have you support the podcast. If you're interested in booking a vacation with them, you can look them up at womanlakelodge.com. <coughs> Sun's not shining on me. It's getting a little chilly. Yeah. You know, why do people always say, oh, the sun sets fast this time of year? Like, it sets fast, like, all the time. You never really pay attention to it until it's like, oh, it's sunset, you know? Yeah, it definitely, um, I guess I don't know the speed that it's, if the speed that it sets at changes, but you don't hear people saying that in December. It's just like, <laughs> no, the sun is down now. <laughs> It'll be up for eight minutes tomorrow. <laughs> Between blizzards. <laughs> um, so, Dan, Over. I would like you to show me what, uh, what sticks you got running. What sticks are you going to bring with you opening day, opening weekend? All right. I've got four of them around me. I didn't bring any any rigging rods. I've just got four jigging rods out. And That's what I like to hear. They're all they're all Elite Techs. Oh no, there's one HMG, and uh, they either have Present XTs or um, Supremes on them. The first one this this one was in the Musky House episode. This is a medium action um, HMG Ooh. with the President XT and. I've got it with a, oh, D 
dude. Ooh. That's just going to be it. That's probably going to be number one. VMC Moon Eye Jig. Yep. And a Kai Tech. And a Kai Tech Easy Shiner. I think that's Easy. just going to be it. I I still don't have like a particular jig head that I really like for running plastics. Um, this one is is up there, but honestly, I think I've caught the most most of my fish running plastics just with a uh, with a Northland jig. Um, that is a sexy shad Kai Tech Easy Shiner. You know the colors, or you well, just, yeah. you're, you're naming it right now? No, no, I got it right here. It's That's called this sexy right shad. Here. Sexy shad. <laughs> I think that'll be good. So I'm gonna. That is playing into the like shallow new growth vegetation. Maybe some sand mixed in. Gonna uh, long casts and and slow retrieves. And hopefully that if I catch a fish on that in the first hour, like I'm gonna have a great opener. Oh yeah. That's number one. Are we gonna go all of mine or should we go back and forth? It's up to you, Dan. Let's go back and forth. Okay. I don't mind one bit. I like that idea. So my first rod is an Elliot 7.3 medium light fast with a uh, Fluger Supreme XT with 10 pound nano fill and about a three and a half, four foot fluorocarbon leader with a guess the jig <laughs> june bug we didn't hear about june bug a whole lot last year did you june. buy more oh gosh I, i'm stocked up buddy i even got him an eighth <laughs> ounce now oh my things God. are getting out of out of control and you'll recognize this from a minute ago that is a <laughs> high-tech sexy shad on the old june bug jig and I've got plans to, to run them a little different than just a straight retrieve. My plan is to cast them out and at least try this, this cadence. So I'm going to cast it out. And what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to pop it and I'm going to hold it up, you know, at, at where, I, where I stop my pop until that jig hits the bottom. And I'm going to give it a little bit of time once it hits the bottom to wind down and pop it again. It's all going to be, this is way different for, for Will Newer here. I'm going to wait. I'm going to do it all on a tight line. I'm not going to run a slack line in my, you know, with my jig. And it's, I think it's going to work. I mean, the, the thought of it in my brain, the way that it's going to pop up and just, ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. And then the walleye's going to go. <laughs> Got him. Got him. That is that's a bold strategy for you and in, in you specifically. It sounds well, great. Tell me I'm so stubborn. I just don't yeah, I think you're stubborn. I'm I'm I like to hear new ideas from you. You want to see what other plastics I have? Sure. I've got this one, which is a pro blue shiner. And then I've got this one, which is an alewife. This is dark and sparkly. I think that'd be a wabado killer. And then I've got power bait ripple shad, three inch, because the three and a half inch I think is just too large and in charge. And then I've got one that I think is gonna, I'm gonna have to cut down, but it's an impulse paddle minnow. And I think that looks really nice too. Mm. But I've got them all, I've got them all. Cause you know, really, if you're gonna go with the plastic, if you don't have like an assortment of colors and sizes, it's kind of like walking outside with one sneaker on, you know, you're just not prepared. <laughs> Do you have any more to say about that? No, that's it. All right. <laughs> this one, this was, I thought of this one today. I, I was not, this is not in my, my regular lineup, but um, just a six pound mono jig and rod. And I've got Ooh, like, I've got an arrowhead tackle. This is a local local business. Austin Mashad, the Mashad family out of Walker makes these things. This is a 16th ounce long shank. If we've got shiners, I feel like this is my my bad day bailout plan right here. So if we've got shiners, it's gonna be this and it's gonna be this thing is gonna be a mile away from the boat when I set the hook. I've got an eighty just hundred on it, so I've got thirteen hundred yards of, of mono. 
and it's going to be 1300. Yeah. It's going to be a mile away from the boat when I set the hook on this fish. No, this is just, oh my God. I think, I think if they're real lethargic, I, I do know I'm fairly confident I'm going to find some, some good numbers to fish, but if they're real lethargic, this thing is just going to be a long way away from the boat and it's just going to be dragging along with a spot tail and gold. Oh my gosh. I think that looks good. Look at that. You carry that thing's shining through the camera. Right. He poured these for me for the, the Cast Lake MWC a couple years ago where I did not do well, but I was going to run giant minnows on these 16th ounce jigs and long line them. But a more practical uh, application would be opening day. Um, and 16th ounce, like that's not a lot of weight, but you can fish that into, you can fish that into 12 feet of water if you're doing it right. So, Especially with such a big minnow. That's my bad day bailout right there. I love that plan, Dan. Yeah, I think it could be good. Um, so I don't have a bad day bailout. I've just got a good day, better plan. Make a good day, better plan. <laughs> so <laughs> on this one, uh, this is a Fenwick Tecna 7.3 medium light. That's the same as my other rod. Anyway, but this is a Tecna. Uh, this one's a super nice rod, and I've got that with a Fluger Supreme XT. Uh, I've got that rigged up with a 15-pound Suffix 832, and I've got this on there. Do you know what that is, Dan? I don't. I can't. Th that, I, I can't think of the name of it. That is a Rapala shad or slab wrap. That's an ice fishing lure. What are you going to do with it? The same well, thing you're doing with the, the plastic? Fairly similar, but different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have that be, I'm going to use it uh, more of a longer, slower sweeping motion. And, but I'm going to let it hit the bottom, slowly wind in my slack, and sweep it again. And I think what that's going to do is it's going to trigger bites a little bit differently than that paddle tail will uh but it's not as aggressive as let's say like a rip and wrap uh i'm going to use it fairly similarly a little bit slower than a rip and wrap it because it's going to does, does it have a rattle in it i don't know oh it does not i like that i feel like you, you, if people watch like we talked about head-to-head uh, -head fishing and river river anglers, like rip and wraps are a staple of their box, man. I cannot buy a bite on our lakes with a rip and wrap. And I think they're, <laughs> they're almost too much, you know? Too loud. Too loud. It's too clear. It's just like over stimulus for, for a lot of our fish. So I like that plan. It's like a tweaked, tweaked rip and wrap. And they come in a bunch of terrific colors. <laughs> talk about going all in well you kind of gotta if you're gonna pilot something new you know because otherwise you'll, it, you'll always wonder you'll always wonder if you were just like one a color pattern off or something you know you want to know what it's like dan What's only like? having one color is just like walking out of your door with only one shoe on <laughs> it's just like it <laughs> you're not, just prepared. not prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so <dumb. laughs> all right <laughs> got two more to go um this one is this is like a what is that this is a karma this is a this is my karma rig right here so this jig was tied up by by Michael, kid named Michael. Um, you know Michael's last name? Uh, George's nephew, Michael. George's nephew, Michael. Osmond. Uh, uh, Os Osmond. He tied uh, us both up a bunch of hair jigs a couple years ago. How do you ago. still have them? I didn't use them. You and didn't fish them in the rocks? <laughs> <laughs> no. So I can't I've believe that. I've got them. I've got this thing tied on. Uh, so custom jig with a plastic to be named at a later date. 
because it's a secret. Um, this is my karma jig from from people who who've uh, made outward gestures to help me out. So if I'm struggling, I feel like this is the one that's gonna pull me out of my my pit. Dude, oh, that's gonna look so it. dirty coming through the water too. It might end Ooh. up with a minnow on it, but I I put a plastic on it for for presentation's sake. And I'm not going to put, I definitely am not going to put a spot tail on it. If this thing catches fish, it's going to have a fat head on it. Don't you think? Absolutely. Boy, the way that thing's going to swim through the water too with that hair, with the feather on there, uh, that's going to be, that's going to be dirty, Dan. Yep. It's the karma jig. I love it. Everybody's got to have a karma jig. You got one more, yeah? Yep. And this is old trusty Rusty. This is my Fenwick world class six foot eight medium rod with a Fluger Supreme XT with nothing other than a quarter ounce June bug. A quarter ounce June bug. Thank you, Dan. I was blanking on the on the <laughs> name. with six pound gamma line on there clear uh, and this is going to be my day two rod uh for fishing uh fishing some sort of a minnow some sort of a minnow uh more than likely a fathead or a rainbow um yeah that's what uh that's what's going to be in my game plan for the first week or so um unless we've got some very warm weather in that first week uh, i don't I, I pretty much only see minnows and plastics in my boat so gotcha keep I've it simple one. what's i want to see the last one dan it's it's the tried and true eighth ounce parrot eighth ounce parrot that i'm gonna you even, dirty dog that thing's so bulletproof you can just throw it around in the yard <laughs> <laughs> hopefully sunny's not outside <laughs> he's not <laughs> he'll bring it right back to you <laughs> 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 Why aren't you throwing this more? <laughs> All right, we got to so, take a break, huh? Yeah, one more quite one question though. Okay. So why have you switched more to, or why have you, why do you fish more eighth ounce jigs than quarter ounce jigs? Uh, yeah, it, it's funny to like listen back to our early podcasts, you know, and like one of our early tips was like, if you don't know what to put on, put a quarter ounce jig on. And I definitely felt that way now at that point. And I just feel like I'm sliding lighter and lighter the longer I fish. So, yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't have a great answer except, except success, I guess, you know, like I have enough good memories from, from smaller jigs to, to make them my preferred uh, technique especially with what I'm fishing, you know, like you're, you're almost, you do want that jig to be, if you're going to fish new growth vegetation, you want it, you want to swim it more than, more than you want to thump it on the bottom, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. That'd be one thing. Yeah. I just feel like the older I get, the, the, the lighter my jigs get. And I don't have a great thoughtful response i'm sorry i'm sorry will i i'm so no, i i, I <laughs> sorry. don't be sorry dan I'm sorry don't be sorry i love the answer i thought it was terrific you just, I, thought, I thought you really i thought you really put a good logical answer behind it okay i did i looked in my jig box and i had four in in parrot i only had four quarter ounces only four of them Remember, I was, the, they're going like hotcakes, man. I was just in the one stop, and I bought a bunch of three sixteenths and eighth ounces. Forgot about the quarter ounces. Oh my gosh! Are they going? But it's like probably a good idea to do them at separate times, the three sixteenths and the quarters, because they are so similar looking, yeah. right? Yeah. So you can, I mean, the the profile of an eighth and a profile of a three sixteenths. I know they're only a quarter ounce difference, but it's substantial. Right, but it's not so much in a quarter and a three sixteenths. Why is that though? Because they're only they're only a sixteenth ounce difference. Right. And Probably the because the smaller you get, the larger percentage the gap is 
between the sizes. Would you buy that? I would buy it more than anything I could have come up with. Because you're right, like an eighth and a three sixteenths and a quarter are exactly one sixteenth apart from each, from one another. Right, as as you step. An eighth and a three sixteenths. It's very very clear which one's an eighth and which one's a three sixteenths. Mm-hmm. A three sixteenths and a quarter, almost impossible if you've had a beer to tell the difference between those. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting. interesting okay that's what let's take a break all right this episode of walleye talk is brought to you in part by the one stop in longville the one stop carries a terrific selection of rods like the fenwick brand the fenwick line uh we have technos we have world class we've got hmgs we have Elite Tech Walleye Rods, we've got Eagles, we've got HMX. That's all of them. Uh, if you're looking to stock up on some Fenwick Rods for Walleye Opener, stop in, come see me at the One Stop. And we're back. What do we got Hello. to cover? Just so you know, folks, mm-hmm. usually I have the list, and right now Will has the list. Well... I I would use your list, but you write it left-handed, and everybody knows I can't read left-handed. <laughs> um, well, let's uh, let's talk about the old walleye stocking for this season. Uh, walleye stocking. Dan, you take over. All right, um, you're the man about. So this has been in the news a little bit. If you're tied into the the walleye world, um, because of current events, they they canceled walleye stocking for the state of Minnesota, or I should say, they they canceled the stripping operations, um, which in the Longville area, uh, that has gotten some press in the past because Woman Lake is is their their location to strip the ingredients they need to stock the rest of the, the region's lakes. So usually they set up a big trap every April, trap a bunch of walleyes, pull the milt in the spawn, or pull the milt in the eggs out of the fish. And that what, that's what supports uh, the stocking program throughout the whole area. Um, this year, because of COVID-19, they canceled it. So they did not strip Woman Lake. That trap wasn't there. And um, so regardless of your opinion on things it's going to be different we're essentially missing a year of stocking in a lot of lakes not all of the lakes but in a lot a lot of the lakes and then for woman lake in particular it's going to be a unique year because they they didn't strip it so those fish got to do their business like they uh naturally would um now do you see there being a big change in our populations especially down the road uh, because of no no stocking this season, I would say that I'm cautiously optimistic that this won't um, won't have a negative impact long term. So there's a few reasons for that. First of all, whether or not they stock a lake or not, um, depending on conditions of the spring, um, and that's when the the fish naturally reproduce, right? Like what the weather's like when they go through their natural reproduction. Um, that can that can vary quite a bit, and that has a huge impact on on the natural reproduction in in any given lake. Um, as far as when they do stock the lake, so like take a lake like Wabado or Little Boy lakes that have some some stocking program, uh, the conditions that directly follow when they stock the lakes also has an impact on how those fit, the survivability of those year classes. So. Uh, the takeaway I guess is there's so many other variables involved that we you should be used to well it's just it's just the the facts that some year classes are great some fall on their face and that isn't going to be any different um even if they had do you see this year a good natural reproducing for for as far as weather yep especially with the last week we had and uh I, I think that lakes that have natural reproduction are kind of like the, this is a, an eligible candidate for another good year class. Um, I do know that the DNR has plans to try to make up for for uh, the lack of stocking that's taken place this year. So 
if they have the abilities in 2021, they're going to try to compensate for what they missed out on in 2020. But they don't have a lot of control over that, too. You know, like they, they can't. Some years. They only have so much to work with. Yeah. Some years are great for stripping, some years are not. And uh, that'll, that'll determine how things go. It, it is important to keep in mind, though, that um, there are folks who don't like that they strip Woman Lake for, for walleye spawn. And there are also folks who live on lakes in the area that don't have any natural reproduction whatsoever and would not have a natural walleye population whatsoever if it weren't for that. So um, it's a complicated issue. I think stocking is good. I think they should continue to do it. And we're going to just have to wait and see and hope that um, the DNR can, can navigate this situation and, and make up for it as best they can in 2021. And keep in mind, too, uh, one year of a good spawn is not an applicable uh, sample size to determine whether stocking is the worst or the best. For sure. Um, just because one year is great doesn't mean that it's the best thing ever just to leave them be, you right. know? Yeah. Because what's the standard procedure? Like they pull a certain percent or they pull up the, of the eggs that they get like that's a hundred percent they put 10 10 percent back into the lake i don't know what the percentage is i will i will say that and i i know that i i interact with anglers who disagree with me on this one i think woman lake is managed just fine i don't think the stripping has a negative impact whatsoever i think that <laughs> right uh it it's a it's a very convenient way to support the rest of our lakes and the way they compensate the dnr has done a lot of research on that particular lake because they strip it and i think that lake will be just fine regardless um and maybe right. even to be to be completely honest maybe be in better shape because of of the mostly because of the research you know like they've done that lake is one of the most studied lakes in in the country um for, for walleye stocking so I'm not worried about that one at all. What I'm worried about is the lakes that don't have a natural re have any natural reproduction, you know. So hopefully they they are able to make up for what they missed this spring next year. One more note. Fingers not crossed. Like, not to like beat this thing to death, but a lot of our lakes are stocked biannually, so they're not stocked every year. They're stocked every other year. Um, so I assume that there's going to be a plan like if they missed them in 2020 that those lakes would they would attempt to stock those lakes in 2021 and that would essentially mean no no interruption to their their stocking philosophy i guess right um right it'll just be on a different rotation that's all we we all want to catch yeah. we want to catch them all over the place and and stocking is part of that and we're not going to feel the effects of that for another three to four years. Right. And, and <laughs> just, I was thinking about like, God, I, I kind of hope that uh, woman Lake doesn't have just a banner summer in three to four years where people are like, this is, <laughs> this is great. They got, you know, it's all anecdotal. Right. All of our evidence is anecdotal. You know, it's like your particular days on the water. Um, are not completely representative of, of the quality of the fishery, you know? Right. When I, I couldn't lake, agree more, Dan. When I struggle on a lake, I don't think it's because there's no walleyes down there. It's because I think I don't know what the heck I'm doing, you know? Like, if I have a bad day, <laughs> I'm not blaming the DNR. I'm blaming myself. Like, God, you don't have any idea right. what you're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> regardless of the reality i think is that's a healthier attitude to have because like then you'll try to get better at something and even if there's there is only like eight walleyes in that lake if you feel like you need to get better you're more likely to catch one of them right you're gonna spend a lot more time trying to perfect your practice right i just don't think complaining about the dnr has ever helped me catch a walleye in my entire life <laughs> 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 oh. well let's uh take one last short break and then we'll uh button this up all right 
Hi everyone, it's John and Lacey from Full Stringer Bait and Tackle. If you haven't heard already, the best bait shop in Minnesota now carries St. Croix rods, the best rod on earth. Did you know that most of their rods are handcrafted in the USA? Matter of fact, right next door in Wisconsin. So if you're headed out on the lake, stop by and see us for all your bait and tackle. We're located in downtown Longville right off of County Road 5. See you soon. Are you still there? Dan? <laughs> Were you just holding still this whole time? <laughs> what? <laughs> How did you sit so still? I was already smirking. It was a nice natural position for me. <laughs> that wasn't very nice at all. Hey. So, Daniel, Paul, Ryan. Ober. What did we learn from the Govna for our respected careers? Uh, pretty clear that we are, we are not allowed to work until May 18th. I have to say. What if I just like, want to go under the table? Like, just take me anyway. I. I, I, I would advise other guides to not do that, and for a couple reasons. First of all, you can get busted. I heard a story of a guide in, in the metro area to, to get busted. And then also, like, the even playing field thing a little bit, right? Like, I think that we should play by the rules. I'm doing that because I want to be a guide until I'm 70 years old. I want to, I want to follow the rules so that my reputation is intact. And uh, I think other f people should maybe be aware of that too, that if, if there's a bunch of us following the rules, um, we should all follow the rules, I guess. I don't know. Everybody's got to make their own decisions right. about this stuff, but, but that's just how I'm feeling right now. I, I talk to you about it a lot. I talk to Jason Freed of Leisure Outdoors about it a lot. We're in, we're in a tricky situation for sure. Um, lots of us in that are full-time guides, we don't have uh, a lot of support coming from the rest of the, from, from the stimulus money they, that we're in a pretty weird niche. I know like Jeff Sundin is not, uh, I'll just say that we're in a, we're in a tough situation for sure. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to stick with the, the spirit of the, of the stay at home for till May 18th and then just be hopeful from there. Um, we do have one avenue to sort of unite our voice, which is something I was, I've been worried about since this thing started. Cause I was like, well, I'm just, I'm just a, I'm just a, a lonely guide up in Northern Minnesota. I, I, my voice is not going to be heard, blah, blah, blah. And I think that is something maybe our professional have to address in the future. But um, Ron Shera, uh, everybody knows that name. He started a nonprofit called Minfish uh, a couple years mm. ago, and uh, he he is the voice for us right now. He wrote an open letter to the governor saying that he thought guys should be able to operate um, and we can do it safely, which I do truly believe that we can do it safely. So I, I hope they'll open I up. I absolutely agree. Um, so if you're if you're into supporting the profession, whether or not you've had a great memory with a fishing guide or you're another fishing guide, um, Minfish is a pretty great organization to support. I know there's some petitions going around. I think it's it's a, a reality check for the profession that we need to have some sort of organized voice when things impact us. And uh, I remember when Ron told me about it, I was just like just another Facebook group to join, no big deal. Right. And now I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful that I have a guy who has a lot of clout as far as like, everybody knows Ron Shera, if you've gone fishing, if you're a Minnesotan and, and he's speaking up for us and he's got a tie to Minnesota or to, to Longville. So I'm feeling pretty thankful for Ron Shera these days. If you want to support his, uh, his organization, what he's trying to do, I'd look up Minfish on, uh, on Facebook, um, you're going to help me out. You're going to help Will out if you do that. So that's all I got to say. That was very well put.
very well put for a big dummy like you. It's it's weird times, man. I I feel like uh, we're all learning some some interesting lessons and um yeah. So we're 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 not guiding. I'm gonna fish until the 18th. Uh, I'm gonna try to fish every day. Try to do as much for our YouTube page as I can. Um, it it also like brought to brought to the forefront that like a big part of the the job is that I like to teach I like to help people learn about the outdoors and that's going to be just lacking as far as how I usually deliver it and one way I can try to make up for it is to to do stuff on social media and and put things on our YouTube page so um there are ways on the YouTube on the YouTube which we've got our own YouTube channel. That's why if you're watching this, it's on our, our YouTube channel, which is while I talk. And thanks for watching if you're watching. Yeah. I can't believe, I mean, apparently people like it, but I haven't watched one from beginning to end of you. Just staring at our faces no. the whole time. I just, I still listen to them on SoundCloud because I'll listen to them while I'm driving. I right. critique myself for talking too much. Sometimes I do. Gotcha. It'll be these. Uh, um, we'll have the opportunity to make some more interesting stuff, though, um, with this new new layout. You know, we'll, I think we'll have some unique episodes where we're maybe both in a boat fishing, and yeah, could be good. It's going to be good. Yeah. Um. So now that we're let's let's just change things to a little bit lighter note, okay? Okay. Dan. Well, last year, remember we played we played a little game. Uh, it was called "What If Walleyes." Yeah, remember that? Yeah, that was well, a, that was a the listener idea too. That was not our idea. It was a great idea. Yeah, we stuck with it for the whole season. Uh, I think I'd like to try a little different game, and let's see how we like it. Okay. A little bit, a little bit from our youth. Um, would you rather? Okay. Are you familiar with the game? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Usually, uh, you know, it's it's just a real fun game, uh, and it can be played many different ways. But in this application, we're gonna we're gonna do would you rather kind of fishing, okay. um, because this is a fish podcast. So, Dan, would you rather? fish an NWT event with live bait down on Big Stone Lake in the springtime? Or would you rather fish a H2H event on Women Lake in late June? Ooh. Am I the am I the pro or the co angler on the NWT? You would be the pro. You're the pro. You're the pro of everything. You're not playing second fiddle to anybody. Oh man, so I have to kind of wipe out because the the woman lake thing. What would bum me out about it a little bit is to have a bunch of good anglers running around out there. You know, should I just mm-hmm. not not consider that like the 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 long-term effects of having a bunch of good anglers fish woman? No, it, this is short-term. Let's fire it off. Let's not think about our future here. The end of June. June 30th. June 28th. Jeez. Whatever the day. Jeez, really? All right, yeah. Then yeah. I'm, I'm for sure taking a Big Stone NWT. For sure. That's what I wanted to hear. I didn't want it to be like a layup for Woman Lake. No know? way. No way. I mean, in, if you had made it like Father's Day weekend or something, it could have maybe made me interested in it. Uh, but no, NWT for sure. I like in Big Stone. If, if Why? Why? Uh, yes. I think, you know, I went down there. God, it was like five years ago. It was the first year I had my Ranger. So I think it was, it was four years ago. I ran that boat for four years. We were down there and I was just feeling on top of the world. And that, that tournament go, went ahead and just set me on my butt. <laughs> for sure. But uh, it was intriguing. 
I also feel like my electronics are, are a lot better. My understanding of my electronics are a lot better now. And uh, I think I'd be right in the mix. Um, I think so too. That's yeah. right up your alley. Right. I think, yeah, that's where I'd be. And you know what else? I'd be real nice to my co-anglers. I keep talking to people who have been co-anglers in the NWT and all these pros are jerks to them apparently. <laughs> what uh, why would you be mean to the person you have to spend two days with and i should say like not all of them but like everybody i know who's fished as a co-angler a couple times has a a, a story of the pro being kind of a jerk and it's just <laughs> like the dumbest like why would you even if you are a jerk why would you be a jerk that dude is like helping you out He's like, he's like, right. Potentially making you a bunch of money. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd be real nice. Even if I, you know, I'd probably place like 45th out of, I'd place right in the middle and I'd have a, would you, I'd have two just lifelong friends. My co-anglers would for sure finish first and second because their other <laughs> pros would be great. And we would just be buddies from here on out. And then like a year from now, I would be, like their their co angler, we we would high five and be like yeah, teach me something. Very nice. Yeah. Thanks for watching while I talk. I'm Will Newer. I'm Dan Ryan. Have a good night. Buy a shirt.